is a place where the raw power of God is being made manifest to bring about healing, deliverance, prophecy, salvation, and all of God's blessings. Worship with us today at Christ Supreme Ministries International. You are all over the world. I am Prophet Eomo Koji, the Son of Man. I want to seize this opportunity to invite you to our programs come and experience the awesome power of god and assure you your life will never again remain the same days of activities sunday miracle service 10 8 a.m wednesdays meet with the prophet one-on-one -on -one, time 8 a.m prompt thursday international business and breakthrough service time 8 a.m come experience the raw power of god as god will be speaking through his servant prophet and prophetess mrs a.o omokoji Wash with us today at Christ Supreme Ministries International, Supreme Street of Obaye Diawa Road, Upper Mission Extension, Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria. Today we're going to be looking at uh, a sermon entitled The Three Most Powerful Instrument of Satan Against Us as Believers. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 6. The Bible says we have we have our own weapons as people of God. And then the same Bible also says that Satan also has his own weapon. Our weapon, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, it says the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold and casting down every imagination. Okay, Satan to us weapon. As we have weapons to defeat or to destroy, okay, the power or the stronghold of the enemy. So also Satan also have power against us. We have to look at his power, his weapons, so that we can be able to at least counteract it. Ephesians chapter six from verse ten. Finally, my brethren. Say, finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might. And in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. That we may stand against the will of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He said, our battle is not between flesh and blood yes but against principality against power against against satan himself and his agent let's look at revelation chapter 2 verse 13. Revelation. i know that works please look at that place very well jesus is one talking to john here so somebody will tell you there is no satan oh there is no timon there is no witchcraft there is no this we should not believe them. Once you do not believe them, they can't do anything to you. Okay. I hear some pastors say, you don't need to believe that there is a demon. Once you believe them, that's when they have power. You are lying. This world, the one we are living in, okay, there is ongoing battle between the forces of light and the forces of darkness. When you say you don't care, don't believe that they exist, it means you are part of them. Okay? If you are part of me, you will not want anybody to see me in a bad light. But if you are not part of me, if you are against me, you always want to let people know that I'm a bad person. So if anybody say, oh, don't believe in drugs, don't believe in witchcraft, whether I'm here, forget it. They are just agents. You know, the world we live now, the agents of Satan are almost... 95 or 97. Those who are the agent of God, they are just less than 4 4 percent. Whether in churches or government department or in whatever areas of life. So you can see what God is, Jesus is telling this man here. Can you read it, please? I know their works. You see, I know what you are doing. I know and your where work. thou dwellest. Where you dwell. Even where Satan's seat is. He says Satan is living with us here on earth. He's living with us. So if somebody, if your enemy is living with you, 
and you don't know, you don't understand the weapons of this enemy and how to counteract his weapon, you're already a slave. That's what I'm saying. You say, I don't believe in spiritual husband. I don't believe in spiritual wife. You don't believe in spiritual husband. You don't believe in spiritual wife. But Oxford Advanced Learner Dictionary says there is spiritual husband. You say there is nothing like spiritual husband. There's nothing like spiritual wife. How can an Englishman who wrote Oxford Advanced Learner Dictionary be wiser, know something about spiritual than you who is a pastor? Eh? How can this possible? English Bible says there is a spiritual husband, there is a spiritual wife. Not even the Bible. It's English dictionary that says so. And you say this thing are not existing. And they are the one existing, giving you sickness, giving you poverty, disappointment, and the rest of them. They are the one who is stopping you from, from giving your life to Jesus. They are the one. So, this morning we're going to be looking at the three most dangerous weapons that Satan uses to enslave us. The three most dangerous weapons of Satan against us as Christians. Okay? I told you we to have weapons according to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 6. He said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The, the weapons of Satan too are not carnal. They are spiritual. That is why it's dangerous. Spirituality, spiritual something is more dangerous than physical things. Because the spiritual determines the physical. So when a man is lacking spiritually, indeed such a man will lack physically. So one of the most dangerous weapons of Satan against us, Satan has no power. This power, these weapons, are what he uses to enslave us. Once we understand those things, it will be very easy for us to live a victorious life. Once we understand this, these weapons of Satan, this is gimmicks. It is very easy for us to live a victorious life. One of the most important weapons of Satan against us is sin, which is number one. Sin. Okay? You can't live a victorious life as Christian when you indulge or engage or you practice sin. When you practice sin, okay, there's no way you can live a victorious life as a Christian. You know, the Bible says, once we give our life to Jesus and we become fully submerged or emerged in Jesus, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 10, it says, once you become a real born again child of God, Jesus will make us to become king and queen to reign first, not in heaven. Our reign is to be here first and then we will continue to reign in heaven. When you say you are born again, you are not wearing, you are not wearing earring, you are poor, you don't use cream, you don't use permit, you, are, you look tattered every day, both in church and outside the church, is that, that is only a sign of born again. It's a sign of slavery. Okay? It's a sign of slavery. This your, this your African pastor, they have destroyed you. Okay? They have destroyed many of you because the preaching they preach to you is not in the Bible. What they preach to you is doctrine. It is called human doctrine, not God's doctrine. As people of God, we are to look, okay, we are to, we are to look 
very, very good. And then we have to serve as an example to others. Okay? But when you're born again, that is why many big men don't want to join Christianity. Because when you say you are a Christian, you don't wear earring, you don't wear good shoe, you don't dress well, you don't do, you don't cannot wear man here, you cannot wear chain. A big man who has suffered and suffered and earn his income wants to enjoy himself. He said, nobody should drink red wine. You drink salt, they're going to hell. And drink red wine and drink stout. That's what the Bible says. But don't be consumed in it. Don't be drunk. All these people wearing, 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 and all this is deceit, is fake. That's fake religion. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29 to 30. They say, Wear wearing, but don't serve wearing. Okay? Have television in your house, but don't serve television. Buy a motor, but don't serve motor. Serve the source of the motor, not the motor. When you begin to worship the motor and not the source of the motor, that's when you have problem. So when you when you know the intrigues of Satan. It will be very easy for us to fight him head on and defeat him. Because you know what I'm saying so? Jesus has given us the victory on the cross of Calvary. But we are to execute the victory. If you cannot execute the victory, there is no way you can be victorious. In John chapter 19 verse 30, he says it is finished. Okay? God, Jesus said on the, on the cross in John chapter, uh, chapter 19 verse 30 he said it is finished. That means it is finished for him. And then in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 he said when he was brought down from the cross and he was buried he went to hell. And in hell having spoiled principalities and power he made a show of all of them openly and he triumphed over them in it. And then when he rose on the third day Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 says, When he wrote, he said, Behold, all authority, all power in heaven, on earth, and beneath the head has been given to him. Okay? Has been given to Jesus. And when Jesus was about to go, in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, he said, I don't need this power. You need it. He said, Behold, I give you this power to you. Okay? I give power to you. Okay? To conquer, to trample upon snake and scorpion, and to overcome all the powers of your enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. How do you overcome is what we are looking at. You must know the intrigues of Satan before you can overcome him. Because Jesus has given us victory on the cross of Calvary. He has given this power to you. You have this power now. Satan wanted to absorb God's power according to uh, Isaiah chapter 14. And then Ezekiel 28 and Revelation chapter 12. Because he thought, because he was dancing for God, he knows God what God's way. He thought he has no God's finish. He does not know that God did not, God is watching everybody. He does not reveal all his power to him. So when eventually he fought with God, God did not stand up to fight him. God was seated on his throne. It was the angel of God that defeated him. And when he was defeated by the angel of God, using the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus, the same Jesus came to the head because he had been cast down to the head. The same Jesus came to the head and help us, okay, give us power so that we can be victorious. Even here that is staying with us, that we can be victorious. So, but when you understand the working of Satan, it will be very easier for you to defeat him. One of the most weapons he uses is sin. Once you sin, okay, once you, you begin to commit sin or practice sin, 
Nobody is perfect. There are different between practicing of sin or sin. When you practice sin, it means you are constantly living in sin. Anybody can sin. The reason why the blood of Jesus is still available is because tomorrow you can sin and ask for forgiveness and then you will be cleansed. But 1 John chapter 3 and chapter 4 says there are some people that are practicing. They continuously practice sin. The Bible says such people, they belong to Satan. And Satan can do whatever he likes with them. Okay? When you, when you engage in continuously, okay, you continuously sin, you practice sin. First John chapter 3, let's go to the place. First John chapter 3 verse 8, what did it say? Let's what the Bible says in First John. He that committed sin is of the devil. He that committed sin is of the devil. Okay, is of what? The devil. He that committed sin is of the devil. When you continue to commit sin, Satan will hands off of you, I mean God will hands off of you rather, and then Satan will take hold of you. Listen to me. All those pastors who are lying that against us and sin of uh, sin Joshua, they are just looking for members. They don't want you to leave. They don't want you to leave their church because of tithe, because of offering. When you see us, the life will live. What we preach is the life will live. Okay, that is why we can command Satan to leave you, and he leaves you. Satan cannot answer Satan. Okay? When you say the name of Jesus, Jesus hears you because you belong to him. Because he knows you. John chapter 15 verse 7. It says for Jesus to hear you, you must be in him and he must be in you. John chapter 15 verse 7. Say when you when he's in you and you are in him, when he say in the name of Jesus, Jesus who is calling me? It's okay. Hmm, the son of man. But when you engage in, when you practice sin, and then you get to the church, and now begin to say, die, 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 die. You just hate your neighbor, you hate your neighbor, you gossip, you keep malice, you don't forgive, okay? You do all sorts of things. You just go to church, you say, die, die, die. Wait, die, die. What's this prayer? Sit down with remove your hearing, okay? It will remove your scalp. It will give you all those slippers. Say so you are you are Jesus. Christianity is not a religion of morning. Please. Christianity is not a religion of morning. We are no longer morning. Okay? We are living a victorious life which God has given to us. The reason why your prayer is not answered is not because Jesus does not hear you. He knows that you need this bread. He knows you need this car. He knows you need husband. Okay? You are looking for husband. You are asking God to give you a good man. And then you are submerging sugar daddy, sugar mommy. You are fornicating. You want... You cannot eat your cake. And see have it. In John chapter 9, verse 31, you see, the Bible says, we don't know before, but now we know that God does not answer the prayers of sinners. But if there is any man who is a worshiper of God and does his way, him will go on here. Listen to me. It's not going from church to church that gives you miracles. Miracle is within you. Okay? They asked him, he said, where is the kingdom of God? In Luke chapter, chapter 17, from 17 to 18. He said, where is the kingdom of God? He said, the kingdom of God is within you. Not outside you. It's within you. Okay? It's within you. When you submerge in sin and you practice sin, Already you should know that that is one of the weapons of Satan. 
you are already inside this cage. Anywhere there is a poo or shit, you see flies. Okay? Sin, sin is a food of Satan. Sin is one of the food that Satan eats. Without sin, Satan will be hungry. That's why his major aim is to plug us into sin. Because if he does not, if you don't sin, Satan will be Satan will be hungry. He will be famous. In John, he said, "Now we know, okay. Now we know that God does not answer the prayers of sinner." But if there is any man who is a worshiper of God, him will God here. In James chapter 5, verse 16, he said, The effectual of having prayer of a righteous man, a villain, uh, what differentiates us from those persons who cannot heal, who cannot deliver, is Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. That is what differentiates us. Okay? What separates us? From a pastor, from a practitioner, okay, and those who are actually doing his way. If you don't do the will of God, you don't expect God to answer you. Let's go to Hebrew chapter 1, verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness. Thou hast loved righteousness. And hate, hated iniquity. And hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even that God. Therefore, God, even that God. Has anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Has anointed the me with the oil of gladness. Above the fellows. Above my fellow pastors. You can, you cannot just sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. And do what other does. I think you can achieve what other achieve. Okay? You cannot just sit down, you sleep with a church member, you lie on the altar, what God has not used you to do. You say, when I was coming from uh, uh, Kilimanjaro on the plane, I just speak in tongue, the plane just stopped. And then the plane could not move again. And then those who are watching you will be making noise. All the apostle says, it is bad for us to give testimony on the altar of what God has not used us to do. Satan no impostor. But member does not know who is a man of God. Until he sleep with you, you now say it's a man of God. It's not a man of God. If he sleep with you, you say it's not a man of God. If you for one eye, you say it's not a man of God. But when he was preaching wearing suit, you don't know if it's a man of God or not. Because only God himself and Satan, no imposter. When you support yourself and practice sin, you see, we must understand something. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13. The Bible says, The eyes of the Lord is too pure to be all sin. It's too pure to be all sin. There is no power again in Christianity because of sin. Okay? Power to prophesize, to heal, to deliver. Sin has eroded the power away. There is a place where the raw power of God is being made manifest to bring about healing, deliverance, prophecy, salvation, and all of God's blessings. Worship with us today at Christ Supreme Ministries International. Grass all over the world. I am Prophet Eomo Koji, the Son of Man. I want to seize this opportunity to invite you to 
our programs. Come and experience the awesome power of God and assure you your life will never again remain the same. Days of activities. Sunday, miracle service, time 8 a.m. Wednesdays, meet with the prophet one-on-one, -on -one, time 8 a.m. prompt. Thursday, international business and breakthrough service, time 8 a.m. Come experience the raw power of God as God will be speaking through his servant, prophet and prophetess Mrs. A.O. Omokoji. Worship with us today at Christ Supreme Ministries International, Supreme Street of Obaediawa Road, Upper Mission Extension, Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria. Church is a place of refuge. Church is a place where people run to when they are poor, when they are sick, when they are attacked by Satan. But if the church is closed, and they open hospital. How can you close church? You now open hospital. And that means there is no God again. And why did you do why did they do that? You cannot blame them. Because power has been eroded away from churches because of sin. When you practice sin, the Bible says you are of the devil. Already he has owns you. You are a slave. If you look at Isaiah 49, verse 24, it says there is a legal slave. Legal slave and an illegal slave. The legal slave, Isaiah 49, 24, it says there is a legal slave and there is illegal slave. Legal slave and those people that practice sin and belong to Satan. They are legally belongs to him. Okay? But illegal slave or victim. Okay, we're going to go there. Those are the ones who are not sinners. But for one reason and the other, we're going to be looking at today. They made themselves slaves to Satan. Okay? Shall the prey be taken? Can you go to the place? He said. Shall the, Shall the be, free taken? be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? There are two people here. Those who are lawful captive. Those one, first John chapter 3 verse 8. They are lawful captive. The first one, can the free be delivered from the mighty? Those one are not lawful because they are not sinners. But one reason and the other, they are under the slave under the bondage of Satan. So, one of the first instruments of Satan, okay, to enslave us, is sin. Isaiah 59, verse 1 to 3, he said, the eyes of the Lord is not, God's eyes is not blind. His ear is not heavy. And his hand is not too short to save you. He said, but your sin, your iniquities, have separated you from God. When you go to biblical churches now and then, they don't preach this message. They only preach faith, how to receive. Because we are in the end of the world. Okay? To preach this kind of message now, you must be prepared to lose some members. You must be prepared to lose some members. A good message now is a message of prosperity. It's a message of uh, how to live, how to, how to make money, how to do this. The real message, you see, gospel is a good news. But the message of the gospel is righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Gospel is a good news. Good news should be rich, you'll be protected. You will be, but how do you achieve this? How do you achieve this? How do you achieve this? It's by living according to his way. First John chapter 5, verse 14. He said, We know this is the covenant we, we have in him. That when we ask for bread, he give it to us because we live according to his way. This is the covenant. Okay? 
Somebody here, an Abalis here was saying, I was uh, in this place, was saying, this man will not last here. Oh, he will not last here. He's preaching with authority. Look at what he's talking. He's talking as if he's the owner of this place. Okay? But, that does not make me to stop the way I'm preaching. I increase my authoritative preaching. Because you know why? Because he is an abalist, but me, I'm, I'm the chief abalist. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, in him we are complete. Who is the head of all abalists and principalities? And if, okay, first John chapter 4, verse 4 says, He that is in me is Jesus. Who is the chief abalist? The second weapon of Satan is ignorance. Okay? The second most dangerous weapon of Satan against us, to enslave us, is what? Is ignorance. In Isaiah chapter 4, verse 6, it says, My people perish. My people are destroyed for what? Who, whose people? Which people? Eh? I'm not hearing you. Which people? You are confused? Which people? We. My people are destroying for lack of what? This is not a season to be staying in the church for 16 days and be praying. Okay? Somebody has ulcer. Somebody is sick. Somebody needs deliverance. You say you should stay in church for seven days. Okay? Seven days you stay in the church be praying for deliverance. If you know you cannot deliver any person, let him go to where he can be delivered. Okay? Doctor, pass, doctor. Pastor, pass, pastor. Hey, don't let, me deliver, let him go. Why are you disturbing the person who is a businessman to stay in the church for three days in the morning, in the night, in the morning, in the night, close his business because of deliverance? If you know you cannot deliver him, let him go to where he can be delivered. Because if you close if you close a business for seven days, the other person will take the the, the, the customers. Then after seven days, you now call, you now begin to bring one anointing water. Anointing where? Anoint. My pastor say anoint. Look at that, you will not walk. Luke chapter 14, verse 28. Jesus said, What is a man that wants to build a, a house? Must sit down first. And know how many zinc he has. How many things he has. What a man that wants to go to war with Satan. He must sit down first. Luke chapter 14, 28 to 30. So he must sit down first. And calculate. Are you a sinner? Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. What did he say? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Yes. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Thou have rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. I will also reject you. So, can we go to Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13? Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. My people are in captivity. Because they have no knowledge. Because they have no knowledge. And their honorable, honorable men are famished. <laughs> my people are in captivity because the difference between a rich man and a poor man is not hard work. It's knowledge. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, it says, why did you die before your time, O foolish man? How can somebody die? God will say it's a foolish man. How can a woman die? God will say it's a foolish man. Why do you die before your time, O foolish man, O foolish woman? Second Corinthians chapter, chapter 2, verse 11. Let Satan should get an advantage Please underline that place. You can see now. That is the second weapon that Satan normally uses to enslave us. That is a second weapon. He says what? Let Satan should get an advantage of us. Let Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Because of ignorance. Prayer warriors are the most poorest people in any church. That's why prayer warriors don't raise again. When you say intercessor, uh -huh, it's better. Prayer warrior does not know the scripture. 
is praying. Okay? Prayer warrior is fasting. It's fasting, you will poop in the body. Tomb, tomb, deliberately. You'll be smelling. I only say, say me, I'm smelling. I will not come near you. If it's a mistake, I'm born here. We hear that one. But deliberately, you just say, boom, boom. All we were smelling. Say the name of Jesus. I know you You the smell. I cannot come near you. You can see. Can you read that place again? Let Satan should get an advantage of us. Yes. For we are not ignorant of his devices. For we are not ignorant of his devices. So, this is the second weapons that Satan used against us. You see, most marriages, most Christian marriages are not marriage. It is already destroyed. They are just pretending. Those who pretend past is Christian. You see, you will see that other than wine. Luke 16. A, a married woman in the house, because you say you are a Christian, every time I apply you the tie. Every time in the morning inside the house, in the bedroom, in the kitchen, when people are not around, I apply you the tie. You tie rapa, oh, I rapa you the tie. You go sweat, you go take calm. A worldly, a worldly person, a worldly lady, when there's nobody in the night, before you sleep, he said, My husband, I don't know they touch me again. I will touch you because everything that apply in the time. But you see, a worldly marriage, a lady will bath in it, she will wear something, something that is showing her body, showing this. You will tie up, hey, I'm born again. Born again. Now you kill Jesus. Can you go to Luke chapter 16 verse 8? And the Lord commanded the unjust steward. Please underline that please. Yes. Because he had done wisely. Because he has done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation. Unbelievers. Wiser than the children of life. And wiser than born again Christian. That's what he's saying. Not me talking, like Jesus talking. Okay? Where is that? So, it's ignorance. When you live in ignorance, you should know that already you are a captive of Satan. Another way, the third weapon, the third most dangerous weapon that Satan normally uses, okay, to enslave us, is poverty. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15, first. The rich, then, the rich man's wealth. The, is, ri the rich man's wealth is is a strong city. Is a strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. Now poverty, now go keep poor man. That's what it means. For those of us who know, you go school where, okay? Because uh, no school. Whether you are master, you might not understand. It's saying now poverty, now go keep poor man. Now, so it's not me right time now. Is there okay? The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of you're just speaking in tongue. You don't apply the principle of prosperity. You're just speaking in tongue. You will speak in tongue, they will sleep with your wife. They will speak in tongue, they will collect your land. They will speak in tongue, you don't be speaking in tongue. You will be frustrated. You now go to after you now go and wear one one rapper, you say now suit. Put in this. Your shoe. Uh, you don't need the fly boat again. Once you jump inside water, you don't be. The, the rich man's wealth is a strong city. The rich man's wealth is a strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. Poverty, you know, say malaria, they keep poor man. When you are poor, instead of you to go and buy typhoid medicine, you can't go buy the one where they select under naira 150. You go take typhoid for three months. <laughs> let's go to let's go to the book of uh, Proverbs 19, verse 6 to 7. And every man 
is a friend to him that giveth gifts. He said, Man, many will entreat the favor of the prince. prince. Yes. And every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. When you give gift, when you give, okay, when you give, you are rich. It is not what you have. It is not amount of money you have that matter. But the ability to channel it in a good way. Okay? Because when you give, you are showing seed. Yes? All the brethren of the poor do hate him. Or the line that place. All the brothers and sisters of the poor man do it. They say, let Tukuman come. Let Tukuman come first. And Roko is in the middle. Roko is Roko Park Jeep. Park Jeep. Jeep, they shine like gold. Okay? In shoe self. In shoe self. When you touch the shoe, you don't reach already. You don't need prayer. Because let us wait for Namdi to come. He's the first son. One of the uncles say, Why are we waiting for Namdi for? Roko, no day here. If you Namdi, if you Namdi come, what are you going to do? Go and make you, you know, boy, make you Namdi talk. Say, okay, we'll buy coffee, buy this, buy this. And now they come come and say, hey, now don't respect me. Respect. Go and examine yourself. The Bible says money answer it all. He said, the, the, the family of a rich man, we do what? Of a poor man. We hate him. We hate him. How much more do his friend go far from him? His friend will go far from him. him. That is why on the cross of Calvary, Jesus died and took our poverty. Okay. He died and took our poverty so that we can be rich. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 8 verse 9. Can you read that place for us? For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, he was rich. Yet for your sake he became poor. Because of us on the cross, he took our poverty. That he through his poverty might be rich. So that through his poverty will be rich. Will be rich. So when you are a Christian, I was preaching on, on Thursday. Spirituality does not allow poverty. Because the Bible says in Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. He said, God himself is the spirit. And where the spirit of God is, there is what? There is liberty from poverty. Okay? When you carry me now, I leave this church, I go to Delta State. Within six months. Eh? If I leave here now, I go to Delta State. Within six months. I might be better than this. If I leave here now, South Africa, I go to South Africa, Within six, six months, one year, I might be better than this. Because the instrument of producing money is in my body. Okay? You now, you are just opening your, your, your leg for anybody to have sex with you. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 7 to 11. It says, your, 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 this thing is money. This thing is money. And you... Because of 10,000, you open. Because of 10,000, you open. And the Bible says this is money. That's why Yahoo Plus will carry your pants. Because this thing I'm enter. The man do my become money. I come and give you 20,000. And you collect, you open. Open and close. You don't have knowledge. No knowledge. So Jesus became poor so that you and I can be rich. When you are now poor again, the Bible says you are crucifying Jesus. Please, Christianity is not poverty. Pay your hearing. Dress well. You are 35 years. You are looking for husband. You will do your hearing. You don't pancake. You don't bend your mouth. When they see you, even your grandmother is more beautiful than you. Who won't marry you? Huh? Don't worry. Holy Spirit is coming to marry you. You'll be Mary. You are Mary Magdalene. These are the three ways by which Satan enslaves us. 
economy, economy, then they drive good marriage. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. One year, two years, three years, four years, five years, seven years, eight years, nine years. I love her. The Lord will fade now. Don't blame your wife if you pack away tomorrow. Okay? Because your wife married you in one room, thinking that you have a good future, in the next 20 years, at least you'll be able to ride a car, you're able to do this, you're able to do this. But in the next 25 years, you are still rotating in one room. You even left the room and packed into your father's uh, compound. God bless us. Call plus 234-803-846-3326 to book an appointment with the Son of Man today. Hi there, thank you for watching. If you love what you just watched, please do us a favor by subscribing right now to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button down below. See you next time and remain blessed.